Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to talk about game development using the Rust programming language in 2022. We're going to look at some of the more popular game edges and framework options out there. So if you want to start creating games using the Rust programming language, hopefully this is a good starting point for you. Now if you've never heard of Rust before, this was started by uh, the Mozilla Foundation, the makers of Firefox and of several other programs uh, back in I think it was 2010. Uh, it's a system level language for doing things like creating operating system level, level applications, etc. and things like games. You have fine-tuned control over things like memory management, there's no garbage collection, there's no runtime, etc. So you should be able to make high performance code, but there are some things in there for actually providing safety that you may not necessarily find in C or C++. Um, so the Rust language, you can learn more about it at rust-lang.org. I will have all the stuff linked in the linked article down below if you want to learn more. I'm going to assume you know a bit about the Rust programming language, so now we're going to talk about some of the game engines out there. I'm going to start off with the old versus the new. So so there's two game engines that probably were the most prominent in the Rust ecosystem, and both are kind of gone by the wayside. The first one is the Amethyst game engine, and this one, I think, in all honesty, it was probably one of the most interesting ones that was out there, but it was also like rocket surgery to learn it. This was a very complicated game engine. It's like they took all of the features of Rust and said, okay, we're going to build everything around these. We're going to build, and it was just sort of over-engineered and a little complicated. And you'll notice if you go to their blog, the Amethyst Foundation is now engine agnostic. We no longer um, singular focus of making any specific game engine. Uh, so in some ways, they've shifted their development effort behind another project we're going to look at in just a minute, which I do find infinitely easier to use uh, than Amethyst was. But Amethyst was definitely an interesting project. It was just a little over-engineered, I would say. Another one that was quite popular early on was the Piston modular game engine. Uh, I think this one also is a little bit kind of like a, let's test how we could make game engines with this language. And then the Rust language evolves over time. These engines evolve over time. And sometimes it's just best to start anew. So those were the two big engines when it came to the Rust ecosystem. And there's still tons of downloads for both of these, by the way. So they're both options. I just don't know that either of them are still being updated. So if you want to get a game engine for Rust that is currently updated and popular, you're really looking at one of two options. The first one is Bevy. Now, probably the one that I would recommend, mind you, I have very little experience with Rust itself, uh, but this is the one that kind of made the most immediate sense to me. This one is like Amethyst data-driven. It uses an entity component system. Uh, if you make fast parallelized code, there's a 2D renderer in there, there's a 3D renderer in there. Uh, the render graph, uh, it's kind of abstracted away from the graphics APIs. It is cross-platform. Unfortunately, no mobile yet, but that is coming. There's a UI layer. There's support for scenes, so you could create tooling on top of this. Uh, you can do hot reloads, etc. cetera. Uh, it is a very cool framework that is updated quite frequently. And if I was looking for something um, a little at the lower level end of things, uh, Bevy would probably be what it was. So if I was going to build my own tools, etc. And then another nice thing with Bevy is there's actually a book that has good documentation that is updated pretty consistently. So this probably has the most developer effort behind it. And I think some of the Amethyst developers are now part of Bevy team. So I would definitely consider checking out Bevy if I wanted a full framework. But if I was more interested in a bit more tooling, a bit more like the traditional Unity Unreal Engine kind of editing experience, then I would probably check out Firox game engine. Now, Firox used to be called Rage Engine. I've covered it both as Firox. I've also covered it as Rage. I also did a video on Bevy. So if you want to learn more about any of those, I will link those in the linked article down below as well. This is another 2D and 3D uh, engine. It abstracts away the renderer as well. There is an audio system in there. There's an animation system, a UI system, physics. It is multi-platform. Again, no mobile. I don't know if that's a Rust limitation or something, but uh, that that is a little bit unfortunate. Um, it just got extended so you can do um, direct work inside of an editor, which is a big step forward. So uh, the Firox 3D was just, sorry, 0.25 release was just uh, announced, which is pretty nice. But the cool thing with Firox is it's also being built with an editor all along. So if you want to have that editing environment kind of experience, the Firox Ed uh, is definitely one of those things to check out. And their new plugin system means that you can write code that runs directly inside of an editor, sort of like you do now with Unreal, Unity, and Godot. So you can actually write your code directly inside of the editor using this new system, which is definitely a step forward. Now, do keep in mind, Firox is still pretty early. This is a 0.25 release. So uh, I don't know that if I was hoping to ship in a few months that I would consider using the Firox engine ad in, in any way, shape, or form, but it's definitely one of those projects to keep an eye on. So you've got the two main players there are probably again, uh, the Bevy engine and then the Firox engine. I think Bevy is probably the most popular in the ecosystem. Now, that is not your only option. In fact, 
you could go ahead. Oh, so if you want to do straight up 2D, GGEZ. I don't know if that's actually pronounced some other way, uh, but this is a uh, love 2D type simple game engine for creating 2D style games. Definitely one worth checking out as well. Again, if you're trying to make minimalistic 2D games, handles things like drawing, sound, resource, loading, events, etc. If you've used love, you got an idea of what you're working with. If you've never used love, hey, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so anyways, GGEZ uh, is a library for creating easy games, basically. Uh, but the next step that might make the most sense is the GD native bindings uh, for Rust. So what this allows you to do is use the open source Godot game engine, which has very mature tooling uh, for both 2D and 3D games, but you do your native game logic scripting using Rust. Now, GD native is the extension system uh, that is built into the Godot game engine. And so what it allows you to do is plug in other languages. There's a few other languages that have been implemented. I think someone did one for Lua. There might be one for TypeScript out there, etc. It's, it's an extension system for Godot, and someone has made it so that you can use um, Rust programming as your, your game logic inside of your game, which is definitely uh, a cool step forward. So if you want more mature tooling, uh, you can use the Godot engine, which has a huge developer community behind it, and then you could use the Rust programming language for your scripting, as opposed to the out of the box, they use uh, GDScript, which is sort of a Python-esque programming language, or C Sharp. So this gives you another option there, and I do believe all the tooling works directly inside of the editor and so on. Um, definitely a nice option there if you want more more mature tooling. Uh, you're not really waiting for Firefox to develop into something bigger. If you want to have that Unity or Unreal Engine like complete experience of having you know the world building environment and all of that stuff, file importers and all that, it kind of in a visual manner, uh, GD Native Bindings for Rust is probably the way to go using the Godot game engine. All right, so we've also got a number of bindings for popular frameworks out there, and we're going to get three of the most popular frameworks basically by reverse order of chronology. So the newest library we're dealing with here is a C library library called Raylib. Now, Raylib has bindings for pretty much every single programming language you could ever consider. I love Raylib. It's a very simple library to work with, and it provides all the stuff you could imagine. So, uh, window handling, 2D input, 3D um, window setup, uh, rendering, um, shapes, uh, text rendering, uh, you name it. If you need to do it in a 2D or a simple 3D game, Raylib probably has the functionality for it. And using the Raylib RS bindings, you can use the Rust programming language uh, with the Raylib framework. Uh, I, I love Raylib, highly recommended. Now we've got two other very uh, mature frameworks out there. There's the SDL uh, library. SDL has been around for... Uh, Ages. I bet you SDL is 20 years old at this point in time. Uh, SDL is probably most famous for being used to do uh, Linux ports of like hundreds of uh, Windows projects. Uh, but there, there's just probably tens of thousands of games that were written using SDL, even if they just use it for Windows setup for, you know, creating an OpenGL or a Vulkan style game. But it is a full library, uh, texture loading, input loading, input handling, uh, text rendering, um, 2D drawing, splite blading, uh, you know, you name it, SDL probably provides it. But if you do not like the way SDL does stuff, which by the way is a C library originally, there's also SFML or the simple so simple direct layer and then simple framework media library or something to that up front. Um, SFML is a C++ simple and fast multimedia library. Oh, it's right here on the screen. Uh, this is another one of these projects. It's kind of like a um, modern update to SDL just written in a C++ style. Uh, there are Rust bindings for it available as well. So Rust SFML is an option there. So if you're doing like the... Um, more low level code things yourself, 2D kind of approach, you do have those three popular frameworks out there. So you've got Raylib, SDL, and SFML bindings available to you. Next, we get into the world of 3D. And here you can see there are bindings for a ton of frameworks out there, so or, or rendering technologies. Things like BGFX has bindings for it. Another thing you get into is um, Skia. Uh, there are bindings for Skia available. There are bindings for Direct3D 12. There are bindings for 3JS or inspired by 3JS. There are Vulkan bindings in here as well. Now, one of the things you want to do when you're looking at this list is just basically take a look at um, the download count. So the ones with like the the the, the K beside the basically 10K, 13K, so on. Those are obviously the more popular ones because this is just a straight out list of the renderers out there, not necessarily, you know, uh, there's no 
validation here that saying something is a good idea. But if you need an OpenGL bindings, you need Vulkan bindings, uh, web GPU bindings, etc. there is something out there for you. And by the way, this site is the last thing I'm going to finish on. And this is are we game yet this is the probably the number one resource for uh, rust game development it's basically got uh all of the frameworks that are out there from a game development perspective uh and then if you're looking if you want to roll your own what you're going to find is various different physics bindings out there input handling animation handling audio etc so if you need an audio library come in here and you will probably find one that fits you so you've got fmod bindings for example etc so this is a great jumping off point now again one of those things you want to be aware of especially if we come down here to say game engines there's nothing here to tell you that something is so we know that amethyst is done and there's still time Tons of people downloading it, but there's nothing here to say, okay, this is this isn't necessarily what you should go with. So this is not a curated list. This is just a comprehensive list of everything that's out there. You're gonna have to do your research on top of it. But the big starting off point generally you can look at is the number of downloads it has and the recent downloads. Probably the recent downloads is the most important one to figure out which ones are the most prominent in the industry. And there's nothing to say that some of these ones with like the lesser download numbers aren't also perfectly viable. Just realize that they're probably either younger or, or more obscure or bad. Um, so there's nothing to say here. Nothing in this list is vetted. It's not filtered. If it exists, it makes sense. It was put here. But this, are we game yet, is probably the next step for you. So if you want to figure out how to work with things, where you want to go with things, you want to learn about this one right there. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a basic rundown of the current game dev world in the Rust programming language. Unfortunately, I wanted to give you a site example of some uh, major AAA style games or even A style games written using Rust. And uh, other than like the order developer, there's not too many people out there that have announced that they are developing their games with Rust, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, again, the big ones, so the previous winners here were Amethyst and Piston, which I probably, I think I did a Rust video back in 2018. And those two were the most predominant ones. Unfortunately, they're somewhat on the deprecated side these days. And what you probably want to start and look at for uh, kind of an end-to-end -end framework to build around is either Bevy, or Firerox, which used to be called Rage 3D. And if that doesn't work for you, uh, where you probably want to go is the GD Native Bindings for the Godot game engine. And those would probably be where I would personally start if I was going to start doing Rust game development these days. But anyways, I'm really interested in hearing what your opinion is as well. Are you working in Rust? Do you like working with Rust? And if so, what tools did you use? Do you have recommendations for or against? Let me know them. Comments down below. And hopefully that was useful. And also make sure that you check out uh, the Are We Game Yet site. Again, probably the most comprehensive uh, place for game development uh, resources, news, etc., uh, in the Rust ecosystem. So do check out Are We Game Yet? And let me know what you think of Rust game programming in general. And I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.